In this video, I'm going to go over AP Precalculus Topics 2.9 through 2.11. Uh, 2.9 is about logarithmic expressions. Uh, so looking at the, the difference between the exponential form of an expression and the logarithmic form. Uh, so exponential is going to be b to the a equals c. Whatever the base of the exponent is, is going to become the base of our logarithm. So write log base b. Whatever goes on this side comes to join the log, and then the exponent is all by itself. Okay, some special notes. If you see log x, that's a common logarithm of base 10, if there's no number there. And then if you see ln x, that is base e. So we're going to convert from first from exponential form to logarithmic form. So whatever the base of the exponent is becomes the base of my logarithm. This part goes on this side. And then we get this. So this is essentially saying 8 to what power is 64, and we get 2. We'll do some of those later. Log base 7 of y equals t. Now going the other form, other way. Uh, base of the log is now the base of the exponent. This is our exponent equals whatever is in front of the log. Here, this is the same as log base e, although we don't typically write it like that, but just to emphasize, the base of this is e, so this becomes e to the x equals 4. Okay, next we're going to evaluate some simple logs without a calculator. Calculators can certainly help us out, um, but we want to understand what the logarithms are actually saying. Uh, so this is saying log base 2 of 16, so we're saying 2 to what power gives me 16. Well, that's going to be to the fourth power. 6 to what power is 36? Okay. Well, that's obviously going to be 2. This is the same as 10 to what power is 1,000. So log of 1,000 is 3. Okay. 81. 81 to some power gives me 9. Well, we know the square root of 81 is 9. And square root as an exponent is to the one half power. Log base 9 of 1. So 9 to what power is 1? Well, 0 is the power that will make that happen. And in any base, that's always going to be a 0. So if it's log base 10 of 1, log base a million of 1, we're always going to get 0. And our last one here. 4 to what power is 1 over 16? Well, we know 4 squared is 16. To get it in the denominator, we make that exponent a negative. In topic 210, uh, we talked about the relationship between exponential functions and logarithmic functions. Um, and basically, logarithmic functions and exponential functions are inverses of each other. So uh, if log base b to the x and, sorry, if b to the x and log base b of x, um, then they are inverses, uh, which satisfies this simple property that f of g of x equals g of f of x equals x. So looking at that in some examples, if I have log base 9 of 9 to the x, they essentially cancel each other out. They are inverses. They undo each other. Uh, same if I've got log, so 8 to the log base 8 of x, well this is 8 to the log base 8 of x squared. So this becomes just x squared. And then natural log of e to the sine of x is just sine of x. Next we have a table of values, uh, well two table of values, and we're determining if they're logarithmic, exponential, or neither. Um, so we saw earlier in unit two, if my input values are at equal length intervals and we're multiplying to get from term to term here, so if on this side we're adding, and on this side we're multiplying, that means we have an exponential function. Okay, and then our justification over equal length input value intervals, and that part's important, because if these aren't equal length and these are multiplying, that is not exponential. But since these are equal length input values, the output values change proportionally. This one 
The reverse is true. My input values were multiplying. My output values we are adding. So relating this back to inverses, if our x and y values are switched, that's how we create an inverse numerically. Uh, so this is the inverse of an exponential, which is logarithmic. So our justification is going to be kind of backwards. So that's going to look something like the input values change proportionally as the output values change in equal length intervals. Next we're going to graph, uh, we've got 2 to the x, we're going to graph log base 2, which is its inverse. So I'm going to reflect these points over. So instead of 0, 1, we've got a 1, 0. Instead of a, two, a 1, 2, we have a 2, 1. Instead of a negative 1, 1 half, we have a 1 half, negative 1. 4 is going to be at 2. So that's what log base 2 is going to look. Uh, and we're going to deal with the graphs of logs here in a minute. Okay. Uh, there's kind of two general shapes for logarithms. First, if our log is base is bigger than 1, and we just have a positive value here, then that logarithm is going to cross at 1, and it's going to look like that. It's going to go to the y-axis here, and then it's going to go to infinity. If the base is less than 1, and we can never have a negative base, it's going to be this, but flipped over. So it's going to approach 0 here here. Okay, so it's just the reflection of this over the x-axis. Now, if I took this one and made it negative, it's going to become this one. If I took this one and became negative, it'd be this one. So logs are going to look like either this graph or this graph. Um, so because of that, we have very predictable characteristics. Uh, so I'm going to do both of these kind of at the same time. Um, so this graph is always increasing. Because as I go from left to right, my y values are getting bigger. Versus this one, as I'm going from left to right, my y values are going down. So we are decreasing. Okay, this one is concave down. This one is concave up. Okay, and then for the end behavior, when we're looking at the end behavior for logs, we're still going to go to positive infinity, but I'm not going to look at negative infinity because there's no graph there. So it wouldn't make sense to say what's happening as we go to negative infinity. What will make sense is what's happening as we approach zero. So how we're going to say that is the limit as x approaches zero from the positive side. This is going to decrease without bound, so we say it goes to negative infinity. The right hand will still go to infinity, and this one goes to infinity. Same thing. We're not going to negative infinity anymore. We're looking at zero from the positive side. And this one's going to positive infinity. And then as we go to... As my x goes to positive infinity, my y values, my f of x values, go to negative infinity. Uh, so that was a quick recap of topics 2, 9, 2, 10, and 2, 11.